When working with an API such as the Google Ads API, there may be some cases where things don't go exactly as you planned for a number of reasons. Today, we are going to see how to handle some of these common errors and to investigate their cause and to help you debug your Google Ads API errors in greater depth. Welcome to episode 5 of our best practices series about error handling, debugging and logging. I'm Mattia Tommasone and today we will explore some of the recoverable errors that you may receive when using the Google Ads API. We will also discuss rate limiting and advanced topics like request and response logging and using REST for debugging purposes. One of the most common errors you may run into is a validation error. These generally occur when your users enter invalid data such as URLs containing special characters or text that exceed the field character limit. In these cases, the Google Ads API will respond with a specific error code indicating the cause of the validation failure which you can then use to sanitize your inputs or to display a meaningful error message to your users and direct them to fix their input. For a deep dive into error handling and how to understand the different components of an error response, check out my teammate Andrew's webinar. You can also explicitly perform input validation before submitting data to the Google Ads API by using the validate only field in your requests to perform a dry run of operations and to make sure they don't trigger any validation errors. A special case of a validation error is the case where you submit text that violates content policies. For instance, you may be trying to bid on disallowed keywords like medical terms, or you may be using some disallowed text in your ad assets, like using too many exclamation marks in the description of an ad. These will result in policy violation errors. However, in the case that you are absolutely certain that the content you are submitting is correct, you may submit your ad or your keywords by requesting a policy violation exemption. So let's see how to request a policy violation exemption. In this case, just as we mentioned before, we are intentionally triggering a violation by creating a responsive search ad with too many exclamation marks in one of its description texts. Sending a mutate operation to create this ad is going to fail and the client library will throw an exception, because the first description in this example is not valid. Once we receive an exception, we can then retrieve the policy violation errors from the exception that was thrown by retrieving the policy finding details field in the error details contained in the exception. Each of these will contain detailed information about the cause that triggered the policy violation exception, but in our example, we are only interested in the topic, that is the field that we need to collect for later use when requesting a policy violation exemption. Now that we have collected the ignorable policy topics, we can send the same mutate operation that failed earlier with an additional policy validation parameter containing the policy topics we'd like to ignore. This will now succeed, and the created ad will be reviewed to determine whether its policy violation are indeed ignorable. Note that this does not automatically guarantee that your ads will be created successfully and start delivering impressions. The ad will still need to be reviewed. All Google Ads API operations are subject to rate limits, meaning that there is a limit on the number of operations per second that you can perform. This is to make sure that our services have the same level of availability for all users. Rate limits can be imposed on several different dimensions, such as the operations performed by a dev token on, on a customer ID or on a specific service in a set amount of time. They can also be a combination of these. In case you hit a rate limit, you may receive a warning, or your requests may be throttled. The time for which your API requests will be throttled and the chance of being warned by us before being throttled depend on the severity of your rate limit violation. Your requests may be throttled for a short time in the event your violation is small, or you could be contacted and issued a warning in case your API requests are causing bigger rate limit violations, besides being throttled for a longer time frame. If your application hits a Google Ads API rate limit, we may contact you to make sure that everything is okay and to work together on a solution to minimize the amount of time your requests are going to be throttled. For this reason, it is crucial that you make sure that we can contact you at the email address associated with your dev token. 
If your requests are being rate limited, you will receive the errors quota error dot resource exhausted or quota error dot resource temporarily exhausted. If you encounter any of these, we suggest you retry your requests after a delay. However, it is also very important that you implement a mechanism such as an exponential backoff to avoid retrying too frequently, because this will actually worsen your rate limit violation. In fact, if you encounter a retryable error and retry too aggressively, it is almost guaranteed that you will be rate limited. Don't do that and make sure your retries have an exponential backoff strategy. Now, generally, the Google Ads API provides meaningful error messages in the responses that help you diagnose what has gone wrong with your requests. But what if you need some more detailed information about the data being exchanged between your application and the Google Ads API? This is where login comes to the rescue to help debug what is going on when something goes wrong. By default, every client library is configured to provide basic request and response logging. But there may be some cases where you need more details, such as the full request and response bodies being exchanged. For these cases, every client library has language-specific login capabilities that allow you to configure logging to suit your needs. You can configure not just the level of detail being logged, but also where to log this information and the format of log messages. Check out my team at Laura's video on logging with the Google Ads API for more detail on this topic. This is also very useful when contacting Google support assistance, because our support agents will often ask you to provide request and response logs and request IDs to better investigate your issues. Remember, though, that you should never submit your personal information in public places such as support forums or GitHub issues. These include your dev token, your customer ID, and your OAuth credentials, such as the client ID or the client secret or the refresh token. Only include these in private conversations and share them just with people you trust. For additional troubleshooting, you may also use the REST endpoints of the Google Ads API. For instance, you can replicate the API requests your applications are performing to have a better understanding of what is going on and to investigate possible causes of failure. While we generally recommend using the client libraries for production use in production applications, troubleshooting and debugging one-off requests with REST may offer some advantages, such as providing full control over the data being exchanged, since it will be exchanged via HTTP, or the ability to read the JSON data being passed back and forth, rather than having to have the client library deserialize the protobufs to be able to view them. However, it should also be noted that the client libraries usually provide more detailed error messages than REST requests. Performing API requests one at a time using REST will also help you isolate potential issues in your application flows because every request is going to be stateless by design. Finally, a big advantage of using REST for debugging purposes is that you can use any tool you like, since the underlying protocol is HTTP, which is very easy to implement and supported by a wide variety of tools such as curl or postman or any other HTTP tool that you may like. My very prolific teammate Laura, again, created an entire playlist about using the Google Ads API with REST, which I would highly encourage you to check out. So now you have learned how to diagnose and resolve many different issues that may occur when working with the Google Ads API. And although we always hope for the best, we also know as developers that application errors are always going to happen. So it is important to be well equipped to investigate them and to debug them. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel to be always up to date with new content that we publish to help you use the Google Ads API better. Thanks for watching.